the word stigma literally means mark. So it's like a negative mark on the person. Um, and stigma uh, is a very powerful social process. It, uh, it involves many of the same factors that can uh, lead to racism, like stereotyping, prejudice, discrimination. Uh, and many times disqualify people from full social citizenship. Um, stigma is very much influenced by culture. Uh, I think Dr. Kumar mentioned that you know, culture changed the perception of mental illness. And this is one of, the, one of the most important ways that culture shapes that perception. Now, all cultures have stigma. And that stigma is based on the explanatory models that the traditional culture has for trying to understand mental processes and uh, how those mental processes are affected or, or derailed. Uh, and many of those are, are, are common in our folk, um, uh, folklore and, and folk thinking, such as, uh, you know, disfavor by deities or uh, belief of supernatural phenomena causing mental illness or uh, somehow uh, having a bad seed uh, in, uh, in, in the family or uh, sometimes even uh, beliefs like uh, poor parenting leads to uh, mental illness. Those are all, uh, you know, common explanatory models that then reinforce stigma. Now, there are different types of stigma that people deal with. There's self-stigma, i.e. The, the shame uh, of having a, a mental health problem, uh, stigma that is felt by the family about having a, a member with a mental illness, uh, cultural and societal stigma in which Literally, the whole population of people with a mental illness or a mental health problem are, are, are discounted or, or, or stigmatized. And even a stigma within the healthcare system. Mental health issues are stigmatized within our healthcare issue and, um, and, and many times de-emphasized as opposed to uh, where it's seen as physical health issues. Um, there, there are many negative emotions associated with stigma, including shame, guilt, uh, you know, shame that the person may feel uh, guilt about having the illness or bearing a burden on the family, uh, projective blame uh, about, uh, about the illness, uh, feeling of loss, uh, and obviously fear, fear of you know, shame and fear of discrimination, margination, etc. cetera. Uh, and stigma can lead to many adverse consequences, loss of family support. It's one of the most important ones if the young person withdraws from the family, uh, but also peer support or sometimes uh, loss of opportunity, but ultimately negative self-esteem. Um, and the worst thing is that stigma can delay access to services. That when you feel, deeply feel shame and stigma, you sometimes will delay accessing services. And sometimes that can lead to some of the disparities we see in students of color. They delay until things are more serious. Um, now, one of the factors amongst uh, uh, students of color is that uh, in, in a way, there's interaction between stigma and discrimination. Uh, and what uh, but many of our students of color feel who have uh, mental health problems is they feel double stigmatized, sometimes triple stigmatized, if you had other factors like sexual orientation, for example. Uh, and they fear increased microaggressions. That, uh, um, there's, the, there's also the imperative to be stoic, uh, which many of our cultures have, uh, you know, many, uh, many of our uh, BIPOC cultures emphasize stoicism as a way of coping with stressors. And that also um, includes uh, immigrant populations. And in, in many um, model, in quotes, model minority groups, but also many students of color, there's the imperative also to, uh, to, to strive for perfectionism, to strive for achievement. And that also gets in the way of being able to, uh, uh, to seek uh, services and to, uh, and to accept uh, the difficulties that one bears in experiencing mental health problems. Um, I, I think uh, an, an important article that I came across recently that I'd like to recommend in terms of the deep uh, impact of stigma. Uh, and this is a, an example of somebody who has serious mental illness, but it still bears uh, looking at is uh, a recent editorial by Dr. Daniel Paul in the New England Journal of Medicine titled The Death of Daniel Prude. Daniel Proust was, was, was a young man who actually was killed uh, as a result of police intervention when he was experiencing an acute mental health episode. Um, and it turns out that Dr. Paul, who was a neurosurgeon in the same town, uh, was related to Daniel Proust, but never knew of his illness because of the stigma in the family. And he was able to see the connection between the stigma that was pervaded in the family, where they didn't talk about the illness, 
and the stigma in the healthcare system and the law enforcement system that kept them from providing effective care.